guys, it's Swigs. Personally, shotguns are my favorite weapon. Not just really in Darktide, but across pretty much any game I can get them in. The Darktide shotguns are up there for sure. Brutal blasts that rip apart poxies at point blank, and honestly reliable enough to go the distance for some frankly ridiculous counter snipes. They are versatile powerhouses that are certified to make you feel like a absolute badass whenever you hold them. But they just keep getting better and better every time I look into them just a little bit more. And in this video, we're going to be going over some particularly juicy wombo combos that shotguns have access to, all centering around one certain blessing, Scattershot. So what is this mythical Scattershot and what's it really giving us? Well, for every enemy that the last shot hit, we'll get a stack of either 6 to 12% critical chance on our next shot. And that's only for the next shot, with the stacks being held infinitely until then, and only spent when the trigger is pulled. And this at max stacks isn't going to give us guaranteed crits, but it'll get us pretty damn close with about every other shot scoring a critical payload, assuming full stacks of course that is. And due to the mechanics of how a shotgun flings a hail of incoming shrapnel at their targets, it's hard not to get full stacks from Scattershot when you pull the trigger, providing a strong head start for a robust crit engine. But for an important question, are crits even worth it for shotguns? After all, usually when we think of a shoddy, they aren't a weapon we would associate with the concept of finesse, so is hyper-focusing into critical hits really worth quote-unquote losing a blessing slot for? And surprisingly the answer is yes, and also sometimes no. On the Cantrio and Lawbringer, crits for non-weak point hits are generally getting a 30% damage boost and a 15% increase for weak point crit hits. At least for everything besides weird outliers like Unarmored and Carapace. And for the Acropine, who sports a better internal finesse modifier, it's getting a whopping 53% boost for non-weak point hits, and 23% increase for weak point crits. Of course, still disregarding the goofier outliers for Unarmored and Carapace modifiers. So the damage numbers are substantial enough on their own, and generally trend alongside the same efficacy of crowd favorites like Full Bore or No Respite, which provide an upper end of around 20% increased damage whenever they trigger. But the main downside that might make you want to pass on this is that it isn't a guaranteed increase to your output and its trigger isn't something you can manually proc or seek out in the field and is instead up to the RNG gods to decide. And while they'll be on your side when you garner enough scattershot stacks, it's an uneasy bargain to be making with the old gods who may curse your weapon whenever they feel like it. And if you do want to see these results become more consistent, you'll need to pay a talent tax and boost your ranged critical chance within your build's talent tree, not at relying entirely on Scattershot to provide your critical chance boosts. But we aren't really here for just the damage values of shotgun crits. No, no. While the damage values have succeeded in not being a complete disappointment, the real magic is when we look into the shotgun's potential interactions with its crit blessings, specifically Manstopper and Flechette. So, let's start with Flechette. This blessing causes shotgun crits to add 6 stacks of bleed to our target. Now for the Acropine and Lawbringer, this blessing is kinda just snoring in the background. And on the Acropine, it's certainly at its worst. On regular shots for pretty much any variant, you'll be killing what you're shooting with the shot itself, most of the time, making the bleed stacks evaporate into the ether without really making any substantial impact in the fight. And for the Acropine slug shot, this is even more apparent since the slug's damage is much more pronounced and its spread fully eliminated. There is an argument in that it will kill off any wounded targets that are barely holding on, but with that being its strongest use case, and with most shots generally being fatal on their own, it's just not potent enough to take up the blessing slot that could be spent on just more flat damage. In contrast, the Lawbringer's Duckbill shot does manage to actually get some proper good use out of the blessing, and the special shot's high cleave and horizontal spread makes it pretty easy to hit a ton of additional targets with partial damage and spread more bleed stacks. And that same propensity for hitting a lot of targets is also going to make it naturally mesh better with Scattershot, providing full stacks as long as you are shooting in generally the right direction. In my opinion though, it's still not quite the strongest blessing to slot in next to Scattershot for this weapon, and we'll go over a much more potent alternative in the next section. But Flechette really, really gets some gas with the Cantriel shoddy, specifically with its special Dragon's Breath shell. And mainly this is because the Dragon's Breath shell is, one, already all about stacking damage over time effects in place of direct damage, and two, has infinite cleave. 
So in conjunction to all the burning stacks we are letting loose, anything intersecting with our crit shot's cone is also receiving a care package of lacerations as well. And the result is the cantrail's transformation into a shrapnel-filled flamethrower, completely annihilating anything that has any damage over time vulnerability with a litany of lacerations and scorching burns. And since the shot had infinite cleave to begin with, if there were even 5 heretics vaguely in front of you, Scattershot is already up and ready to go again at full power. And I honestly believe that this Cantrio kit can even rival the Flamer to some degree for Horde Clear. While you're not going to exactly match the same damage profile of the Flamer at full blast with its ult fire, and there's some suppression loss as well, you're trading that off for infinite range, infinite cleave Horde removal, so I'd consider it a fair trade. All while of course still maintaining access to a strong as hell shotgun whenever you aren't loading it with concentrated war crimes, that is. Now if you're already impressed with the Kant's flamethrower no jutsu, you'll be more than pleased with the Akrapine and Lawbringer and what they're bringing to the table with our next blessing, Manstopper. Providing extra cleave to your pellets for shotgun crits, it's easy to think that it's not really going to be a big deal here. But it's the amount of cleave that they are giving us that makes this blessing so goddamn excellent. Blasting through nearly a hundred poxwalkers point blank with just a single semi unaltered shot. And while the Cantrail's Dragon's Breath round can't receive any special treatment from Manstopper since it's already at an infinite omniscient cleave, the special shell from the Akerpine or Lawbringer's variant can still reap plenty of benefits from Manstopper's inclusion. For the Lawbringer, it takes its signature clothesline special and upgrades it into a certified guillotine cannon, completely shredding a column of chaff from the neck up. And the Akerpine may be using a slug, but it's a slug that can still cleave. With the manpower equipped on a crit, You've got yourself a fully functional railgun, taking the slug from the barrel of your gun all the way to the wall behind your target with a full disregard for whatever the hell decided to get in between that straight line. And while it's not ascending the Akerpine to a horde clearing god like it is the Dragon's Breath Shrapnel Blender or the Guillotine Gun 3000, you can still use it to clear lines similar to how you would with a Void Strike on a Psyker. Not as effectively, of course, but it's faster to shoot and the projectiles hit skin, so it's at least easy to work with when lining up against backline targets and trying to score some pretty sexy collaterals. So all these fun tips and tricks aside, how do we build around these effects to get the most out of them? Well, fortunately, for the most part, pretty shotties are pretty build agnostic, running okay on their own and much better when given just a little assistance from your talent tree. For Zealots, the best picks for the Critty Shotgun is, hands down, the Keystone Blazing Piety, granting a 15-25% to 25 increase to both ranged and melee crit chance. And if you're using the upgrade Fury Rising, an additional synergy emerges as every enemy hit by a critical blast from your shotgun will count as their own separate trigger for Blazing Piety, making it possible to instantly enter a state of fury after just one lucky shot from a Kant's Dragon's Breath special. As for veterans, they have a lot more to cook with in the kitchen, having an operator modifier for a flat 5% boost to crit chance, alongside easy to slot in passives like opening salvo and deadshot that provide reliable boost to crit chance. And don't fret, because that stamina vampirism from deadshot is easy peasy to manage considering the fact that we're using it on a blunderbuss and aiming down the sights is basically optional anyway and need only be done for a split second when necessary. And veterans also have access to weapon specialists, which alone acts as its own self-contained crit engine, completely bypassing the need to min-max crit chance at all for the build. And it being that good, it's to the point that Scattershot isn't even really all that necessary for the build anymore, and you can swap it in for a bog-standard damage blessing in its place. And if you don't want to see a build showcasing this, my latest veteran build guide, the Trench Rat, is a great example of this in action. As for what melee weapon to pack with your gun, the Cant and Lawbringer bring a lot to the table in terms of horde clear, and as a result of them already being phenomenal boomsticks, they work great for specialists and elite removal as long as no one's wearing any carapace. And because of this, bringing a weapon that's comfortable cracking open some heavy armor is going to be well advised to make sure you don't have any glaring weaknesses in your kit. But it's also important to keep in mind that your horde clear is only going to be as good as your ammo count, and if you bring an Akrapine, you won't be as strong as its siblings in clearing crowds either. In that respect, making sure that your melee pick is versatile enough to handle hordes when necessary is also a good idea. Some good examples are combat axes, thunder hammers, chain axes, and power swords, but you can easily accommodate this with plenty of other options here as well, so experiment and field what makes sense for you. And of course, if you want to sidestep that tax of making your melee weapon the go-to carapace cracker, you can handle this on the talent tree level as well, to some degree. Zealots can use the armor nerfing side effect of their Fury of the Faithful combat ability to just pretend carapace is flak as, through the God Emperor, all things are possible. 
Well, veterans can just bring crack grenades and throw in some grenade regen talents, making sure that any carapace parades are only as long as their grenades fuse. But what do you think about the critty shotties? Think you have a place for them in your build? Personally, I've been loving the scattershot flechette combo on the Cantreal, and I have not been touching the flamer much since. But that's all for this video. As always, if you liked the video, leave a like, comment if I missed anything, and have a great day. See ya!